Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Also check out Discord and the Udemy links at the bottom for once they get up. I'll put the links in the description box. Uh, but here we are. Alright, so in this tutorial, or in this video, we're going to work on the textures. So I'm going to make sure we initialize the texture. It's going to be step one. The next thing is going to be to make the sprite display the texture properly and we get the right size of the sprite and we're going to control that by using the scaling functions of the sprite and then we're going to work with whatever time we have left we're going to work with the movement of the sprite and then some diverse game stuff but let's just start here and we'll see where we end up so the first thing you want to do is you want to go into github and you want to get your texture the one you want to use and say you have your game repository your game uh, solution here your visual studio project you want to go into wherever you have your game files and you want to create a little folder there called textures or whatever uh, and once you do that you want to put a ship texture in here now remember you probably want it to be a png uh, with the backgrounds you know uh, transparent so that you don't get this weird kind of look so you want to make sure it's transparent and it's whatever you like now the size as you can see of the image is pretty big and this is how big the ship's going to be in our game until we scale it. But I did manage to rotate it the right way, you can just do that, edit that, I don't want to do that in the game so I want to have it pre-rotated to where I want it. So when you, once you have that, you want to get that path, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this path here, okay, and I'm just going to say control C, but you want to remember your game files are here so it's gonna grab everything it's gonna see this folder as its home folder so what you need is actually textures backslash ship.png so pretty much that's how it's gonna work first of all we want to make sure we have our texture right here the way it is that variable is gonna hold our texture so I'm gonna say this texture dot uh, load from file very simple very self-explanatory uh, name here then it has something like some other what do you call it some area type thing which we don't have to think about right now all right you don't have to think about that that's for later on uh, so all you need is the file name so where did I put it I put it in textures that's my folder right so let me just see textures and then boom and it's gonna be ship.png all right now this texture load from file if you look at it, if you hover on it it's going to be a boolean and that means if it failed it's going to return some kind of error thing so i'm going to make an if statement around this and in case it does not work so either you can do an exclamation mark here as in c plus plus or you can say equals to false i'm going to do my exclamation mark and i'm going to do this and when i just print something out you don't have to throw anything here if you want to throw an error you can do that but I'm just going to go ahead and do a little see out see out just to tell you that some crap happened and you probably want uh, IO stream in here as well in include IO stream then we don't have to do that in game pretty sure I'm not doing it in game anyway probably in main but whatever see out error I want to say it's an error also, I want to say where it happened. I want to say it's in player. Uh, that class. And I want to say which function. So init texture. Could not load texture file. Something like that. And you just want to hit it with a new line as well. And boom. So now we'll see if there was an error in loading it. But I want to crash the game. I don't want to end the game if it doesn't load. It's fine if it doesn't load. Uh, we still don't want to we still want to run the game but in case that happens that's great so you loaded the texture now we're gonna set the texture to the sprite and that's beautiful now we're gonna have to resize this sprite but first of all i want to show you what it looks like if we render this uh, and i want to make sure i'm rendering the player so i'm not rendering the player here in the game.cpp render function and the reason we want to do that is obviously yeah, we want to see the player, right? And I haven't even created a player character yet. So what I need to do in game here is I need to 
go down here set a player or yeah whatever type of thing and I want to make a player pointer like that and obviously we're gonna do it in it player function here a private function where we're gonna initialize everything that has to do with the player so in this function in the CPP file that was created here here is where we're gonna keep everything related to the player now if you remember we created the pointer right so this player pointer equals a new player and we just keep it empty because the player constructor is empty all the player constructor does is call init texture which already knows which file to load and in its sprite which just sets the sprite size and the texture to the sprite once that's done you don't want to forget to call it so this in it player otherwise you won't have your player character and of course we want to delete this player at the end whenever we're done good good so that is that now we just want to make sure it renders but before that I'm gonna do this in the update function for game move player because I don't want to forget that and then here I'm just gonna uh, render the player this player render and of course our target so where do we want to render our player we're gonna render the player in the window directly and it takes a let's see what it takes it takes a reference and our window is a pointer so we need to dereference our window and we're good to go so now hopefully our player will, re will render properly this crap right here Ooh, there's a lot of crap just to get something something going the swag lord does the swag lord render the swag lord rendered it's a huge swag lord damn that's crazy okay so that brings us to step number two we're gonna resize the sprite now if you remember how huge that was if we do 0.5 that's not gonna be enough now let me just tell you how this resizing works so this sprite dot is it a dot there scale so how does this work you can read about it here if you want but the way this works if I set scale 1.f 1.f it's a factor it's not like 20 or 30 it's not like that you want to put it Oh well you can use 20 whatever I'll, I'll explain that as well but if you put one here it's gonna be the original size of the image if you do minus one here it's gonna flip the image right it's gonna go to zero and then go to minus one which will flip the image now minus one obviously or zero obviously is gonna make it the scale zero percent in the x direction this is gonna make it zero percent in the y direction so that's gonna make it a zero zero right so you won't see it at all if we do one one it's gonna be hundred percent of the image so obviously you can use 0 0.5 to make it half the size you understand how this works now so it's a percentage type thing so I'm gonna put it at 0 0.2 0 0.2 and that will keep kind of the the size of it the let's see if that that works okay so that's that's all right it's a little too small maybe 0 0.1 so you're gonna have to test this out uh, obviously yeah that's that's better zero point okay why did that close okay all right that's good that's good I think I pressed the escape by mistake but there you go so that is a good scale for our ship once you're done with that we just want some quick quick movement for our for our player um, good 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 and the way we're gonna do movement now is is a way that I like to do it you don't have to do it like this uh, but I'm gonna make a void move function and I'm gonna call it and I'm gonna give it a direction so uh, float const float dir x const float dir y alright and this function is very flexible because it's gonna allow me to move my player in many different ways well, we're not going to use all those ways here but I'll explain to you why I'm using this because when you're making physics and stuff it's gonna be a lot easier if you keep your movement in your own function in the player class so whatever you're trying to move will have its own move function and we'll call it in game we'll catch the input in game and we'll call that function with our directions here to make sure which way it moves and then this function will take care of everything so for example we're gonna make a very simple one here so if uh, or we're gonna do this um, this 
sprite.move. So sprite has a move function, as you might have known, and it works kind of the same. You can give it a direction uh, and a movement speed, and it will move that direction. So first of all, before we get into the movement, I need to create a movement speed variable here. Float movement speed, like that. And we're going to set that to, let's see, in player, this movement speed equals, well, let's say 10.100.f, something like that. Might be a lot. But okay, now we have a constant movement speed. So it's going to move with this movement speed multiplied by dir x and then this move meant speed multiplied by dear y so how is this going to work well if i give it zero here it's not going to move at all in the x direction if i give it a minus one here it's going to move well yeah backwards kind of or to the left if you have a plus one it's going to move to the right so that that's the way direction controls everything so that's all you have to do here uh, and to make this work what we need in game right here is we need to check if sf keyboard is key pressed so this is the function to check how check for input if you don't want to use events all right so is key pressed okay sf keyboard key a or you could just do sf keyboard a so a is left this player move so that will give me minus one f and then 0 0.f now all we need to do is whoops copy paste this four times go to the second one say d and just remove the minus and that will move me to the right if you want to move up w uh, w where is it there we go keyboard oh god w there we go this crap always bugs the hell out of me and then so up is minus one to go up and then s would be down and that would be a positive one and a zero in the x direction so don't forget to nullify or make this a zero on the x for the y direction and make this a zero for uh, on the y for the x direction okay i hope you understand that but just copy all this hopefully i'm not going too fast but if we run this now you should be able to move your character around properly okay 100 was a little too much let's go to player let's just before we end the video let's just make sure we can move our player with one maybe so we can see what's going on yeah okay so now we can move our player with wasd good all right guys so that is step one complete next one we'll probably make some enemy make the shooting mechanisms work all the bullet stuff so yeah we'll get to that thank you so much for watching thanks for sticking with me Take care, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, alright? Bye-bye.